Hi everybody, um, my name is Jess, I am 25 years old, I'm gonna be honest about who I am, um, I was born into a family, I don't know what kind of family it was, but I almost feel like I was maybe something other than what... I appear to be or something, or like groomed for something, almost, and it, it, it just kind of disturbed me. And um, basically, what happened to me, and um, why I think I'm going to hell, and why I think I deserve hell, or some form of hell, is that I <clears throat> I didn't believe the dreams I had since early childhood. I didn't believe that they could possibly be real, that these fantastical lives could possibly be lives that I had lived at some point, or that someone else had lived at some point. These people were like superheroes to me. They were beautiful, smart, capable women that grew, grew up to be amazing people who somehow transformed into men that these these sad emotional men that couldn't, that had to shoulder the whole world on their shoulders, basically. And I always felt this sort of responsibility that I, that I was that person, that I had to be that person. But I, with each night, each, every, every time that, <coughs> just more and more, <coughs> just, and then every time it got scarier and harder, and harder and scarier. And it's just like, when it came time for me to feel like it was my turn to do this act, to become this person, this immortal man or something, that then passes the the knowledge or the, or the, um, the body to the next man, um, it, 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 it just, it was too much for me to do. It was too much, and I was too young, and I didn't realize exactly, I had forgotten most of the dreams, and I hadn't been watching mass media, because I had been, uh, um, because I had been ignoring it, and then I started watching it, and it, it overwhelmed me in a way that I couldn't quite fathom, and I was scared and fearful of death, I'll be honest of that, and I don't think... If anyone else had gone through the, th the things that I had been through th with the life that I had, they would respond the same way. I think if you had been born as me with the DNA and the, the rearing and everything I had, it was just um, impossible to be the perfect person, um, given all these expectations I had for myself, and then being subpar in my estimation and now I, I i know i have skills but i i it's hard for me to apply them because of just all the things i've been through so when the, the time came to do this great act that the mass media was basically pushing on me i i i rebelled basically because i thought it was wrong for one and then, two, I didn't want to do it because it, I thought it was wrong still. And I didn't understand precisely what was going on and, or who was doing it or who was telling me to do things or what. And I, I just, um, the fear set in. And I, I, I reacted anger with anger. And I, um, I just, I didn't know, it's like I, I, I just didn't know how to interact with people. I still don't. And I... I just wish I had, um... spoken to people earlier about the dreams I had and, and what they meant and how I should be interpreting these things and how I... how I should live my life or... maybe I should have been reading more literature. But the fact of the matter is it, should, it was just always hard for me to read. I was just always a little bit slower than most people, so I uh, I just didn't know what to do. Like most, I just and it just didn't always interest me. There was always other things that was more interesting to me, or athletic pursuits. But anyways, 
I then got hospitalized at a certain point because of the guilt, because I then realized, what if I just curse somebody to an eternity of a immortal body that just, they can't get out of or something, and I'm just like, what the fuck did I just do? And I, I, I'm just like, I just couldn't handle the, the guilt. I, I got hospitalized because I was just bawling my eyes out thinking I had to be Jesus or some shit. And I was like, I'm going to hurt myself. I'm going to, I'm going to do this bullshit. I'm going to go swim out into the ocean and be an idiot or whatever and then kill myself. And it's just, it's just, a, I just think it's a stupid idea. It's just really fucking dumb. And I, I think people should value their lives. And I know I, I do have suicidal tendencies or suicidal thoughts a lot because I just don't like myself because I have a dark side, an extreme dark side and an extreme light side. Now, when I got hospitalized that first time, it was almost like I was paranoid. I was paranoid about food for months. And I was just like, wow, what the fuck is going on? There's something in all the, this, like, this mass, the masses food or whatever. And, like, whatever, like, the rich people are, like, getting special food or whatever that's not poisoned or something. And I was just, like, really freaking out because I, I was noticing changes in my gums and was just like, what is even going on here? What is this shit? And it's just like, then I, I was like, wow. I have to really be careful about what I eat. And then I drank coffee in the hospital. And then went into this, like, meditation group. And basically, almost willingly, somehow gave up my soul to somebody or something or lost it somehow. And I don't know where it is or who has it or what's going on exactly. But it's, it's really disturbing to me because... Um, for a time now, I, I mean, after that, I was like, well, yeah, it was weird, you know? I mean, maybe it was just something that was, like, in the air in the hospital or something, or something they were doing to me. I don't even know, but, um, it, it, it's just, it's just so fucked up. It was just... It just, and then it happened again. And again. And, it, and then it just, it, like, my hunger changed. It was like they were gassing me and shit. And it freaked me the fuck out. But anyways, when my souls were taken out, or soul... I then basically started touching animals and people and stuff and didn't realize that it was me that was... At first I didn't realize what I was doing. I had a, sus I had a suspicion about what was going on when I, I got this kitten with my friend. Because like... It was almost like the cat then was like part of me or something. And I was different because I had touched the cat. And I was like, this is kind of sick. I, it can't be real. None of this is real because it, I was already, you know, having a lot of drug issues. I was coping with a lot of fear with by smoking pot. And um, it may have made it worse. I don't really know, but I... I, I I have a love affair with pot, and I can't stop right now. It's just uh, part of who I am, and part of the way I cope with my life, and how I get by. But, um, but yeah, and then, and then it's like, well, it can't possibly be real. And then, and then it was like, it's like, I'm gonna, and then it got to a point where I was gonna die or something. I thought I was dying. And basically touched one of my animals so that I could survive. I'll say that out loud. And I think, I don't know if she willingly did it, or let me do it. 
but I'm not. I, I, I don't even know. I don't, I, I have no idea. It was like I, would, I was touching her, and then, and then I stopped, and then... She, it was like she wanted me to keep going. So I just kept going in, until I was basically completely her. And she basically went through my memories and... And understood exactly who I was and wanted to help me. But it was so sad about what had just happened and about and felt and I felt so much guilt that I had to get myself hospitalized again. So I did, and that's when I felt that I was like, Yeah, I deserve hell. And um I was being honest about that. And uh and then people started telling me that, you know, it can't possibly be true. It's not real. You're telling me all these things, these lies. When I had felt these things happen to me and then, you know, kept... It was like I kept checking to see if it could possibly be real. And it was like, it feels kind of real. Yeah. It kind of does feel real. It feels really real. And all, everybody's eyes are changing. And I don't know who to trust or what to do. And I can't... It was like people were purposefully hurting me also. And it just got, it just got out of hand. And now I've been seeing other people's eyes changing when I shake their hands and stuff. And I, I'm afraid to touch people. I don't want to touch people, but... In the same time, I, I crave physical contact in a really extreme way. And um, just really have always just been trying to find somebody to be with. And I'm starting to realize that it's like it's not going to happen for me because of what I've done. I don't think anybody can ever forgive me. And I don't think I can forgive myself. And I've already made a video about this, and I know it's it's just too much, but I I just wanted to be completely honest and post this on the internet because I need to be brave about it, and I'm just like I don't I don't want people to repeat the mistakes of the past and do something dumb and hurt themselves like I've hurt myself. I don't want them, I don't want them to, to hurt themselves. I mean, I'm, it's almost like I created this fantasy in my mind or something when I really didn't, when it was like fed to me or something. It wasn't, it's like, it, it was just all too much to bear. So I, I don't even know. So now I'm just, I'm just getting by. I know I've done wrong things, but I'm just trying to live a life and get by. And it's almost like every time I get near somebody, I, I just, things go wrong. And I just don't want, I just, just want people to, find happiness in their own way and be and live their own lives and be themselves it, nobody should yes i tried to be somebody else i keep i kept trying to alter my personality and stuff but it in the long run it just it's not worth it you just have to be yourself maybe we use little tidbits of acting in our daily lives to get by but to change our essence or something on purpose to hurt it'll hurt ourselves okay <laughs>